Meganium. Need I say more? But for real, why is it that every single generation this thing gets left out on all the buffs? I mean, it gets Trailblaze, which is cool, but seriously, it needs a Mega or something in Legend ZA. Today's video, I'm going to be showcasing Meganium as a Swords Dance Sweeper. And let me tell you that under the right conditions, this thing can be a monster. With Terror Blast Fire and Earthquake coverage, with Stab Trailblaze to raise our speed, this goofy little flower can snowball out of control real quick. The first battle with Meganium is against someone with symbols for a name, strange, and you really get to see Meganium shine in this one. If you want Meganium to get a buff of some kind in the next game, then go ahead and subscribe as I'll be covering it straight away. Stick around till the end for a rental code of the team, and without further ado, I present to you all the Meganium video. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun to my opponents. So they're going to lead off with Grunge Ninja, the Toxicroak, as I led off with my Ninetales. So obviously we're going to get hit by a Gunk Shot here. But you know what? It's fine. I want to get that um, Aurora Veil up straight away. So I'm going to go ahead and do just that. They go for a Fake Out. Absolutely fine by me. They have got the Poison Touch, which is interesting. So to that's um, not a Dry Skin Toxicroak, which is cool. Uh, we flinch and couldn't move. Why is the Toxicroak looking up in the air like that? That's so bizarre. It's looking at the snow. It's trying to catch it on its tongue. Anyway, let's go for an Aurora Veil once again. This time, there's nothing that's going to stop us. There we go. Aurora Veil is up. Made our team stronger against physical and special moves. They go for a Poison Jab. And it does a nice little bit of damage, which is not too bad. So, now, we're going to switch out. We're going to go into Dragapult. Because Dragapult can take a Poison Jab, no problem being a Ghost type. It's also immune to fighting types. And we can just drop a Draco because they haven't got a Fairy type. So if they go for a Poison Jab, it's going to bounce right off us. Yeah, it bounces right off us. No Poison either, which is nice. We're going to drop a Draco right now. Um, they go for a Sucker Punch. Still, Aurora Veil's up, so we're fine. No Poison Jab. Heal. We miss the Draco, which is really unfortunate. Wasting a turn of the Aurora Veil. We drop another Draco. They go for a Sucker Punch again. This time, though. Oh, never mind. They didn't. This time, we missed the Draco again. Are they like? Are they Bright Powder? Because if they are, that's BS. All right, I'm going to go into Great Tusk now. We'll save Dragapult for later. So, we missed two Draco Meteors. They've got to be Bright Powder or something. Like, there's no way I'm that unlucky. There's no way. So, Great Tusk comes in. Sucker Punch comes through and fails, as you would expect. And um, we simply go for a Headlong Rush here because it doesn't look like they're switching out. They are withdrawing. Okay, never mind. They withdraw. What are they going to? Swords Book? Lens. Who's Lens? Flygon comes in. That's immune to the Headlong Rush, which is like makes sense. Um, Levitate obviously comes into effect there. Uh, we can Ice Spinner this thing, but I'm going to get my Stealth Rocks up first and foremost. Dragon Breath. We go for a Stealth Rocks. Stealth Rocks is fine. Now we simply go for an Ice Spinner and take out this Flygon. I don't see any reason not to. They go for another Dragon Breath. It's not going to do much damage to us with the Aurora Veil up. It might paralyze us. Ice Spinner comes through. And that's a dead Flygon. Very dead Flygon. So Flygon goes down. Which is great. And the Aurora Veil does wear off just in time. So that's, uh, that's alright. Pelvic Tilt is going to come in. That's the hit on top. They want to get rid of the Stealth Rocks. That makes sense. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say the Intimidate as well. Um, I'm going to go into my Dragapult now. And I'm simply going to drop a Draco on this thing. And then eject pack into my Meganium. And then we're going to go from there. So uh, let's see how this plays out. So Jin comes in. They do go for a Rapid Spin. We block that nicely, which is great. Then we drop a Draco. We simply drop a Draco on this thing. They withdraw. They don't want to drop a Draco on that. And they're going to go into the Toxicroak because it's Bright Powder, right? Belly Bolt. So they're probably like AV Belly Bolt, if I had to guess. Uh, Stones are going to dig in. We go for that Draco Meteor. We hit this time, which is nice. Nice bit of damage on the Belly Bolts. The special Attack is going to harshly fall. Activate their Electromorphosis. And then the Eject Pack is going to let us switch out, which is great. So we got a nice little really strong Dragon type U-turn right there, which is fantastic. So now... It's Meganium's time to shine, I think. So Autumn's going to come in. This should force a switch. We're nice and shiny. Look at that beauty. Um, they are leftovers, which is good to note. Very good to note. Let's go for... Do we outspeed everything on the team? No, let's go for a Trailblaze first and foremost. Did we draw the Belly Bolt? So now we are going for a Trailblaze. We should be immune to everything they go for. Uh, Dear Lord. 
That's going to be the source book, right? Yeah, source book comes in. I guess Sap Sipper does it. Does it? I think it does. No, it doesn't. Okay, that, oh, it might do, but they might not have it. So we get the Trailblaze off and get a nice speed boost. Then we expect a double edge and we go for a Swords Dance. Now, what do they do here? Let's go for a Swords Dance. They don't go for a Grass type move, so there's no point Terra Firing. They might go for a Jump Kick. Headbutt. It's not going to do too much damage to us. So now we Terra Fire Terra Blast on this Swords Book's face. So there we go. We're going to Terra Fire. And from here, we should be golden. So we Terra Fire Terra Blast. Look at that. That, that color scheme with the Terra Fire looks amazing. Absolutely amazing. So uh, we go for a Terra Blast here. And that's definitely going to take out the Swords Book real quick. So Swords Book goes swiftly down to a plus two Terra Fire Blast. And now we just have to hope that when the Toxicroak comes in, we A, don't get poison from the Sucker Punch and B, we actually hit our attack. In comes the Toxicroak. So they're probably going for that Sucker Punch poison, which makes a lot of sense. Um, I'm going to go for a Earthquake here because they're not dry skin. They go for a Fake Out. That's going to do a bit of damage to us. Uh, no poison. That's great. We have got the Covert Cloak, so the Fake Out isn't going to work on us. <laughs> Which is really cool. We have the Covert Cloak so that we can sell up on Gargs and just not be affected by residual attacks from um, enemy things like, for example, a Fake Out's Flinch or a Poison Jab's Poison, stuff like that. So Hit on Top comes in. We do get the Intimidate off, obviously, after the Point Stones dig in. So we're at plus one attack right now. Which is great. We're still up. So let's go for a Terror Blast once again. Terror Blast should do a lot of damage to the Hit on Top. I don't think he'll take it out, but it should do a lot. Oh, that's some good damage right there. Good damage. They go for a rapid spin. They still don't outspeed us, though. They get rid of the Stealth Frogs, though. So if they are Focus Sash on the Zoroark, they officially have the Focus Sash still. So let's go for another Terror Blast. We still outspeed because of the Trailblaze and Megani being naturally faster than him on top. Terror Blast comes through, takes out the Hitmon top cleanly, which is nice. So Meganium has done really well this game. And that is surprising to me. Very surprising. In comes the Belly Bolt, or is it? It is. <laughs> it is the Belly Bolt. So let's go for an EQ right now. If they Terra Fire... Oh, they didn't, they didn't Terra at all. I was going to say if they Terra Flying. I think they've just accepted their fate now. As the Belly Bolt goes down, which is fantastic. And then they have to go into Zoroark here. And Zoroark is the Doubter. That's a cool nickname. Comes in. We go for a Terra Blast and it should KO here. Should. If they haven't got Focus Sash, it should KO. So Focus, the Terra Blast comes through. They haven't got Focus Sash. And we got a Meganium Sweep. You know what? I've been battling with this team for ages. I deserve this one. This one is this one is for me. This is the Meganium Sweep. Thank you. GG. What a sweep! Meganium came through like the absolute legend it is. You love to see it. The next game is against Pokemaster88 from the Pokemon Battle Hub Discord, and they also have a YouTube channel where they post battles too. So go check them out after the video. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Pokemaster. So they're going to lead off with Hatterene, as I led off with the Thunderous. So obviously that's a good lead for them because it means I cannot... Thunder Wave or Taunt or anything like that because they have the Magic Bounce ability. So I'm going to go for a Volt Switch right off the bat. Volt Switch comes through. It's going to do a nice bit of chip damage to the Hatterene. There we go. A nice third of its HP. And we'll go into something that I'm partially expecting a Calm Mind. I don't think they'll go for a Mystical Fire. So I'm going to go into Scizor right now. So Scizor comes in. Kronos comes in nice and shiny. Look at that beauty. Much better than the original Lime Green. They go for a Calm Mind though. So if we assume... They don't want to take a bullet punch, so they're going to Terra. And they're going to Terra into either a Fire or a Steel type, right? Gotta be. It's got to be Fire or Steel, one of the two. So, I'm going to go for a U-turn instead. They withdraw the Hatterene. They don't want to Terra just yet. That makes sense. And whatever they go into is going to take a U-turn from a Choice Band Sizzle. The Blastoise comes in. Blastoise comes in. We go for a U-turn now. And we're in a much better position because of it. So... Um, that's that's great. So Blasters comes in. So what are we going to do? I'm going to go Meganium and scare it out. So Meganium comes in, which is great. Nice and shiny. You gotta love it. There we go. Look at that beauty. 
Just simply going to go for a Trailblaze because I know they're going to switch out and it'll put us in a better position against whatever they bring in. And they're going to bring in Typhlosion, which is a good answer to us. So Typhlosion does really well against my entire team. They frisk us and find our Covert Cloak. They probably are Choice Scarf, but even this little chip damage will reduce the Eruption's power just a little bit, which would be nice. So, uh, what we'll do here is if we're expecting an Eruption, we should go for the Terror Fire Swords Dance. No, we should go for the Terror... No, we shouldn't go for Terror Fire. We should switch out. I'm leaning towards Dragapult or... No, because if the... No, wait, 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 wait. Terror Fire... Let's go for Terror Fire Swords Dance. I'm pretty confident we could take an Eruption. So, Terror Fire comes through like so. And um, Meganium's looking all right right now. Hopefully, they don't predict the Dragapult and go for a Ghost-type move, because that would be awkward. Or like, um, what's his signature move? Infernal Parade. They won't go for an Infernal Parade, surely. So we go for a Swords Dance. They're not Scarfed, which is good to know. We get a Swords Dance off. We're looking pretty good right now. They go for his Fire Blast. They're probably Specs. And that does no damage. So that's not Specs. So now we've got a Swords Dance up. We've got a Trailblaze up. Let's go for an Earthquake and take out this Typhlosion. They withdraw the Typhlosion. What are they going to go into to take an Earthquake, though? Probably Ogre Pond, right? Blastoise? They're going to sack off the Blastoise? That's fine. Blastoise can go down to an Earthquake, no problem. So Earthquake comes through. That should take out the Blastoise. Brilliant. Absolutely amazing. Meganium coming through right now is a massive threat to their team. Darkrai comes in. So if they're Scarf Darkrai, they could take us out with a Dark Pulse or Flinch us. Um, I'm going to go for a Terror Blast just to see if we can. They are Scarf, which is good to know. And that's going to flinch us. No, no flinch. We go for a plus two Terror Blast and that should take out the Darkrai from where it's at. Oh, they can't flinch us because of Covert Cloak. That's good to know. So the fact that the Scarf means that we should probably switch out here. We could still use this later on down the line. And um, we could set up on the Hatrine, for example. So if they're going to go for a Dark Pulse, we know they're locked in. I'm going to go into Nine Tails, And I'm going to go for an Aurora Veil. I think that is definitely what we need to do here. So Meganium became a big threat, but it was swiftly put aside. We should have gone for a Trailblaze, really, on the Dark Cry. If we'd have done that, we would have been in a much better position. So uh, Dark Pulse comes through. That's going to do no damage, but we know they're Scarfed. They have to be. So we go for an Aurora Veil here all the time. They withdraw the Dark Cry. They don't want it to go down to a Moonblast. So they probably go into Typhlosion here, if I had to guess. Typhlosion, the reliable partner, comes in for real. And Typhlosion is here to stay. Not really. They frisk us and find a Light Clay, but it doesn't really matter. We go for an Aurora Veil. And now they know why we have Light Clay, which is obviously a thing on Nine Tails anyway. So... And with the light clip, with this up, we can go into whatever we want. I'm leaning towards the Great Tusk or the, the uh, Dragapult. Um, I feel like they predict the Dragapult and they go for a Shadow Ball. So I think I'm going to go into the Thunderous. I'm going to go for a Thunderous Switch. So let's go. Let's do that. We'll go for the Thunderous Switch. There we go. They might expect a Thunder Wave. They go for a Fire Blast and they miss. So that's unfortunate. They might expect a Thunder Wave or a Taunt or something and go into Hatterene. So I'm going to go for a Volt Switch here. They do withdraw the Typhlosion. If they go into Pormot, the Volt Absorb. If they go into Hatterene, we're all right. So they go into Pormot. That's, that must mean the Volt Absorb, right? I mean, maybe not. They might just go into it because it's resisted. So um, we go for a Volt Switch. But unfortunately, they are Volt Absorb, which is unfortunate for us. Um, and this might seem weird, but I'm going to Taunt it. So we go for a Taunt. Um, I can't remember whether Revival Blessing's banned by Smogon terms because we're playing OU right now. Um, they do go for a knockoff though, which is going to do a bit of damage to us and gets rid of our heavy duty boots, which is fine. Um, we can now go into Great Tusk and um, threaten this thing out of a headlong rush. So uh, what I'm going to do is... Um, actually, I'm going to go into Scizor. I'm going to go Scizor because they can't... Because right, I, I didn't want them to go for a, a bulk up. I didn't want them to go for a Revival Blessing. And I didn't want them to go for anything else either. I wanted them to attack. So I, I think we're in a good position. So we withdraw our Thunderous. And we're going to go into good old-fashioned Kronos the Scizor. Who is full of HP right now. They could go for a Fire Punch predicting this. They actually go for a knockoff, which is fine. I didn't think they would go for another knockoff. They knock off our Choice Band, making us much less of a threat. So we go for a U-turn now 100% of the time. Because even if they go for a Fire Punch, we should be able to take it with the Aurora Bell. They go for a Double Shock, though, which gets rid of their... Um, gets rid of their electric typing, which is interesting. So we go for a U-turn. And that does a nice bit of chip damage to the poor mod, which is fantastic. So we need to get Meganium in on that Hatterene, though, that's for sure. And um, with the Aurora Veil up, we are in a very good position. So 
Do we go Meganium now? No, because they probably go for a close combat. We go Great Tusk. We go Great Tusk. Tusk and he can come in now. And um, if they assume we're going to go for an Earthquake, they probably go into Ogre Pond here. If I had to guess. I'd say Ogre Pond. So if they're going into Ogre Pond or Hatterene, I'm going to make a double into Meganium. They do withdraw the Paul Mart. Are they going to go into the Ogre Pond or the Hatterene right now? Hatterene comes in. That's a good switch for us. And we go for a switch ourselves into Meganium. Which means we can now go for a Trailblaze. And I don't think we need... I don't think we need a Swords Dance to get rid of the rest of the team. Darkrai is weakened. They're all weakened. And um, they're calm mindset, so... They're probably physically defensive, physically offensive. Do we go for a Swords Dance here? I'm going to go for a Swords Dance. Screw it. I'm going to go for a Swords Dance. I reckon we can take a hit from this thing, no problem. With the Aurora Veil up. They go for a no oh, Nuzzle. Oh, I didn't see that come in. Unfortunately for them, I'm Covert Cloak. <laughs> So I'm not going to get paralyzed by that nuzzle as the Aurora Veil does wear off this turn. So now I can go for a... Uh, the Aurora Veil weared off. I'm going to go for a Terror Blast. We go for a Terror Blast at plus two. I would have gone for a Trailblaze, but I think they're physically defensive, personally. Yeah, they are physically defensive because they take that like a champ. And they go for a Draining Kiss, which isn't going to KO us. So I could have gone for a Trailblaze there, but obviously that didn't work out like that. Um, Terror Blast should KO them from here, though, even after the leftovers, I think. Maybe not, actually. Maybe not. Either way, Meganium's done pretty well this game. It's done very well this game. We go for another Terror Blast. If this doesn't KO the Hatterene, it's not the end of the world. It is not the end of the world. It does KO the Hatterene, though, which is fantastic. Was that crit? No, it wasn't a crit. That's great. So Hatterene goes down. They did not know we were Covert Cloak at all. I mean, who, who would think it was? Who would think we were? It worked out perfectly, though. They tried to nuzzle me. I should... <laughs> Typhlosion comes in. That's a good switch. Now, Typhlosion is an interesting one here. So what we can do is they obviously frisk us and find out we've got Covert Cloak. So they know for now. They know. So what we're going to do here is we're going to switch out. I'm, I'm leaning towards just sacking off something. Sizzle could be really useful for the Ogre Pond on the Darkrai. So I'm going to go ahead and sack off uh, Thunderous to get a free switch to a um, Alola Ninetales. And then we go for another Aurora Veil uh, to defend the team. So we'll go into Thunderous now and let it go down. They go for a Shadow Ball. That's definitely going to KO us because I'm no, no doubt in my mind the choice specs. Oh, it doesn't KO us. So we go for a Vault Switch because here's the thing. If we Thunder Wave and they go into Dark Cry, they get a free Dark Cry Switch because you can't Prankster Dark type. So I'm going to go for a Vault Switch here. And um, they do withdraw the Typhlosion. Are they going to go Dark Cry to get the Thunder Wave? Poor Mop. That's another good one. So they're going to get a Healing Recovery from this, which is fine. I don't mind too much the Poor Mop getting the Recovery. As the Vault Absorb is here, so that's fine. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go for a Terror Blast just to get some damage off on this thing. It's only normal type, so it still does a lot of damage. They go for a knockoff again. That's going to take us out. So Thunder is going down, not the end of the world. We can't paralyze the Paw Mots. Can't paralyze the Dark Rai. And they have both of those to switch in. If we try and paralyze something and they bring Paw Mot and we heal it. So it makes more sense to do it this way. So I'm going to go into Ninetales now and I'm going to get that Aurora Veil back up. So Ninetales comes in. They have Knockoff, they have Double Shock, and they have Ice Punch. I think. Did they have Ice Punch? Let's go for an Aurora Veil anyway. Aurora Veil comes through, which is great. That means we're going to be able to take a hit from this thing, no problem, as they go for a Nuzzle. So this time they go for a Nuzzle on it, something that actually can be paralyzed, uh, which is interesting. So the Nuzzle comes through, paralyzes Ninetales. However, I'm in a pretty decent position. I can just go for a Moonblast right now. They withdraw them Hallmark. Are they going to go into the Typhlosion? Typhlosion would make sense. Yeah, Typhlosion comes in. The Reliable Partner. I love those little, like, nickname things that you can get on the Pokemon. So they frisk us and find the Light Clay. Duh. Um, we go for a Moonblast. Bit of chip damage off on the Typhlosion, which is nice. And um, we just, at this point, we let Ninetales now. I reckon they go for a Shadow Ball. I'm going to go for another Moonblast. I I'm going to go for another Moonblast. I think the Choice Specs... The Calm Mind. Ooh. That just took a 180. So we stayed in, went for a Moonblast. I thought they were choice spec by all the... No, no, they weren't choice specs. Let's go for an Encore and lock them into whatever they go for next. 
If they go for a Fire Blast to KO us, it's fine. They go for the Fire Blast. They do unfortunately miss. We go for an Encore. They have no luck with hitting Fire Blast today. That's, that is really unfortunate. So, um, just because I don't want to switch anything in, I'm going to go for another Moon Blast here. They go for another Fire Blast. They do hit it this time. And it's going to take out the Ninetales, no problem. We do have the Aurora Veil up for a little bit, so it's not too bad. Um, what we can do here is, it, since the snow stops, we can risk it for a Chocolate Biscuit. Because they keep they seem to be missing a lot this uh, this game. So if Meganium's doing anything else this game, it's going to be to swiftly dodge a Fire Blast and go for an Earthquake. So let's go into Meganium now. Wait, they didn't have any hazards, did they? No, they didn't. That's good. Let's go for an Earthquake real quick. They go for a Fire Blast. They do hit it. So that's unfortunately Meganium's done for now. Uh, which is whatever. Meganium did really well this game. So I'm definitely going to include it in the Meganium video. Um, it's a really good battle, though, that we're having right now. So that's great and all. Um, now Dragapult can come in. And we can just go for a Shadow Ball and take this thing out. No problem. So Dragapult comes in. Like I said, if Meganium was doing anything this, anything in, for the remainder of this game, it was dodging a Fire Blast and going for an Earthquake there. So we'll go for a Shadow Ball and take this thing out. We've drawn the Typhlosion, not wanting to take Shadow Ball to the face, which makes a lot of sense. And they're going to go into Poor Mott to take said Shadow Ball to the face. Um, and take it, it will not, because it's low on HP anyway. So Shadow Ball comes through. I think Dragapult cleans up now. No, it doesn't actually, because the Ogapon can definitely take a hit. That's for sure. They haven't Terra yet as well, which is something to note. Ogapon comes in though. That's a good switch. Ogapon comes in. Um, I'm just going to drop a Draco and then a Jack Pack out into Scizor. So we drop a Draco. We do unfortunately miss, which is very unfortunate, but they missed a lot of Fire Blasts. So you know what? It's fine. Uh, Knockoff's going to come through and not do too much damage. Knocks off our Jack Pack. So we're not going to be doing that anymore. Aurora Veil does wear off as well this turn. Um, so I'm going to go for a U-turn here and go into Scizor. So we U-turn like so. Bit of chip damage on the Ogre Pond. Well, a bit, a bit. About a third of its HP. And like I said, we just go straight into Scizor here 100% of the time. So Scizor comes in like so. And hopefully they go for a Play Rough here and not a knockoff. So Scizor comes in. They go for a knockoff. We've already had our item knocked off, so it's not going to do much damage. As now, we can just go for a U-turn, no problem. They withdraw the Ogre Pond. Are they going to go Darkrai or Sizzle um, or Typhlosion? One of the two. Yeah, Typhlosion comes in. That's fine. We're going to get a nice and powerful U-turn off on this thing, and then we just go into Dragapult again. So U-turn comes through. No damage because they are Ghost and Fire, so they resist four times. I think Ghost resists Bug, right? I could be wrong. Uh, we always go Dragapult here, though, and we go for a Shadow Ball straight up. There's no reason not to. We get the KO here. So Dragapult comes in. We go straight for a Shadow Ball, no problem. Shadow Ball comes through. That Typhlosion is history, which is funny to say because it's literally a Hisuian Bug one, which is ancient. Anyway, wasn't that funny, but you know what? It was funny to me, and I'm just chuckling to myself now. <laughs> so in comes the Dark Cry, which is a good switch. Um, obviously, it's going to go for an Ice Beam or a uh, Dark Pulse here. So I think what I do here is um, I just let Dragapult go down, right? Yeah, I'm just going to let Drag Dragapult go down. So they go for an Ice Beam. Yeah, I was going to say I can't really go into Great Tusk to resist the Dark Pulse because they could have Ice Beam, uh, which they do go for. And they do confirm they are Scarfed. So now we simply go into Scizor and we should be able to finish off this game with Bullet Punch. So let's go into Kronos. There we go. Nice and shiny. And we go straight for a Bullet Punch right now. Bullet Punch comes through. Darkrai goes down, which is fantastic. And then they go into Ogre Pond. So let's see if we can actually win this game within the time limit. Ogre Pond comes in. We've got 10 seconds. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. Let's go for a new turn. 3, 2. They go for a Swords Dance. They gave up. <laughs> <laughs> they have gave up. We go for a U-turn. That's going to take out the Ogre Pond. And just in the nick of time, we finish the game. What a bloody game. GG Pokemaster. We always have the most fire games ever, me and Pokemaster do. They're always amazing every single time. What a nail-biter of a game. The Covert Cloak came through in that one. You love to see it. I always have the best matches with Pokemaster. So you thought we were done? Well, guess again, because I have an awesome bonus battle for you all with the old but gold Gumshoes team against Cody from the Pokemon Battle Hub Discord. Enjoy. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Cody. So they're going to lead off with the Ampharos. Nice and shiny as we lead off with Vimto. 
The Alolan Ninetales. So are we going to see Power Herb Meteor Beam right now? That is the real question. I'm going to go for a Aurora Veil right off the bat just to find out. Because they don't have a Defogger. They have a Rapid Spinner and either Quack Will or Great Tusk. Probably Great Tusk. Um, so let's see how this plays out for us. They do go for a Thunderbolt, which is going to sting a little bit, but not too much. In fact, that does nothing. It does get the Paralysis, though, which is unfortunate. But at the same time, what can you do? Um, now I'm going to go for... Because they probably go for a Volt Switch here. So I'm going to go for an Encore. We Encore them into Thunderbolt so that they can't Volt Switch out. Which means they have to Hard Switch out. And that means we can play around with it a bit. Um, so they go for a Thunderbolt. They get a crit. That's unfortunate. We know that they, they either switch out here into something like the Slowbro. In which case we go... Um, we know they're going to go for a Thunderbolt. We should go into Great Tusk. We should go into Great Tusk. So we withdraw our Ninetales. We withdraw our Ninetales. And we go into Tuscany real quick. Because we know they're going to go for a Thunderbolt or switch out. One of the two. They do withdraw, and I think if they're going to withdraw, they're going to go for the slow row, right? Quackable. Interesting. So Quackable's a good one. It's nice and shiny as well. Gotta love it. We 100 go for an Earthquake here just to get the damage off um, on the Quackable. Knowing we can take any hit from this thing as well. That's going to be great. So they go with their bulk up set. Oh, dear. That ain't good. So if they're bulk up, we need to be really careful with what we do here. We need to be really careful with what we do here. So, I think the best thing we can do is go into Goldengo right now and trick them. I think that's the best thing we can do. We trick them the Choice Scarf so they can't sell up any further. So we go Goldengo. They go for a Roost, which is fine. They probably go straight for an attack here. They've got one bulk up up. We go straight for a trick here all the time. We trick. There we go. We're not playing around with no Quackables. Quackables one of them Pokemon where once it gets this setup going, it's unstoppable. As we get some leftovers, which is nice. They go for a knockoff, which is going to do a lot of damage to us. It KOs us, actually, because of the bulk up. Critical hit. Not sure if that mattered or not. Like I said, they've got a bulk up up, so it probably didn't matter. Um, now we just, knowing they're locked into the knockoff, um, and they've got a Moxie, sure, that's fine. We go back into our Great Tusk. We go back into Great Tusk and we Earthquake. Or we set up Stealth Frogs, one of the two. So let's go yeah, Let's go for a Stealth Frog. Stealth Frogs would be really useful to have. They withdraw Quackable. What are they going to go into? Superior. Superior is a good one. Nice and shiny as well. Gotta love it. We go for a Stealth Frogs. That's going to be up for, well, not for good because the Great Tusk is right there. But um, we know the Crackle doesn't have Rapid Spin at least. So it's got Roost, Bulk Up, Knock Off, and then probably Aqua Step. We're no close combat, which is interesting. So um, what do we do against this thing? Uh, I'd say probably Sack Off Ninetales. Go into a Raquanid. Go for a, a Mirror Coat. I think that is the way to go forward. So we'll go into Vimtel. There we go. Vimto comes in. Snow Warning comes through. They go for a Reflect. They're a dual screen superior. Interesting. The Aurora Veil does wear off. They probably want to KO us before we sell up our own Aurora Veil. If they don't, they go for a Light Screen. So we get the Aurora Veil up again, which is great. If we're not fully paralyzed. We don't get fully paralyzed, which is great. Aurora Veil comes through. So we've got screens up both sides. But you know what? I don't think the screens actually helps them that much. Um, so I'm going to go for a Freeze Dry just to stop the Great Tusk coming in. But they do go for a Leaf Storm to KO us, which is fine. Absolutely fine by me. As Vimto does go down. So now we're in a bit of a predicament. So what do we do? If they're, if they're dual screen, they're probably not Terra Rock or anything like that. They're probably Glare with Leaf Storm. So I think Charizard's the way to go here. I think Charizard is the way to go. Yeah, let's go Charizard. Let's go Charizard. With the Aurora Veil, vale, we're eating up light Leaf Storms like the nothing. If we force the Terra here, we force the Terra. So I'm going to go for a belly, belly Drum. They do go for a Terra Blast, which is going to sting a little bit. Not too much, though. As we go for a Belly Drum, which is going to raise our attacks to sky high levels. And uh, we eat the Citrus Berry, which is great, which is going to get our health back. So that's that's great and all. Do we Terra here? I'm going to Terrestrialize into a Dragon type just in case they Terrored, but they aren't going to Terra. They're going to go into Quackable. Which is fine. 
And they're going to let that thing go down to an acrobatic. So we terrestrialize into a dragon type. Again, I just didn't, I didn't, I didn't want to risk them terror rocking on the uh, superior, but they, they might not be terror rock. It's just sometimes they are. So I go terror dragon, just in case they terrored. We're at plus six attack. So, you know, we're not, we're not in a bad position by any means. And um, we go for the acrobatics. That's going to take out the um, crackable. I can't say acrobatics today. I can't say it. I don't know why I can't say it for some reason. Ampharos comes in. Good choice. Good choice. Now, if we assume this thing's going to go for a Terra, they probably expect an Earthquake and they're probably going to bait a Terra. So let's go for a Fire Punch. Nice neutral ground. So they do Terra. Are they going to Terra Flying or Steel? If they Terra Water, we're screwed. But they wouldn't Terra Water because Acrobatics is neutral against that. They are Terra Water. So they were... Oh, okay. So Terra Water comes through. Problem is, they can't really touch us with the Aurora Veil up. So we go for a Fire Punch. Nice bit of damage. No static. They go for a Dazzling Gleam. Oh, okay. You got Dazzling Gleam. That's cool. We go for an Acrobatics here 100% of the time. Acrobatics comes through. Takes out the Ampharos cleanly, but we do get static in the process, which is unfortunate. Now, it's not the end of the world because Iron Valiant outsped us and so does Superior. Slowbro doesn't outspeed us still but it could still quick draw us. And Great Tusk can take any hit for days, so not really too worried about it being paralyzed. Great Tusk does come in. Like so. Get Stealth Rocked and Sticky Webs, which is, oh no, 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 no Sticky Webs. We go for an Acrobatics. We always go for an Acrobatics here because they go for an Ice Spinner. If they went for Rapid Spin, for example, we would have lived that, but obviously they go for an Ice Spinner. If they went for Rapid Spin, we could have taken him out, but it's, it's kind of stopping them from going Rapid Spin. In that sense, so um, that's not too bad. The Reflect is going to wear off. They have Ice Spinner. Aurora Bell's up. I think we do it. I think I think they severely underestimate young uh, Gumshoes here. First, I'm going to scout. I'm, I'm going to play safe. I'm going to scout, see if they've got close combat. If they haven't got close combat, then we're all right. If they haven't got close combat, then we're all right. Either way, I'm getting the sticky webs up. So they go for an EQ. So they haven't got close combat, which is good to know. That does nothing against our Araquanid. The uh, light screen does wear off. And the Aurora Veil wears off as well. So now, we go for a sticky web 100% of the time here. They go for a rapid spin. That's fine. I'm getting the sticky webs up. I'm getting the sticky webs up. They haven't got a Sash user anymore, so I'm getting the sticky webs up. I don't care what anyone says. Sticky webs are up. Now, are they going to stay in and get hit by a liquidation just to get rid of these uh, hazards? That's the real question. Let's go for a liquidation and find out. They withdraw. Okay, so that's good. They withdraw. And they go superior to try and get the uh, light screen and reflect back up. Which is fine. They get caught in the sticky web, but that's going to boost their speed because of the contrary. But that's fine. Superior outsped us anyway. Liquidation comes through. Nice bit of chip damage. Does boost their defense though. That's not good. Now we go for a Leech Life, because they go for a Reflect anyway. So we may as well just Leech Life away. So there we go. Leech Life comes through. Boom. Bit of, bit of damage. Bit of damage. It's unfortunate about the Liquidation boosting the defense, because that's just ruined the Leech Life. But they haven't got a Recovery move, I don't think. So we go for another Leech Life here. They go for a Light Screen. As uh, we go for straight for the Leech Life, there's no problem. Just going to keep going for it, because one more will take him out anyway. And it gets our health right back up as well, which is great. So, we go for another Leech Life. They go for a Leaf Storm. No damage, of course, because we're a special defensive monster. And then we go for a Leech Life and take out this... Sub it lived? That's annoying. I should have Miracoted instead. Let's go for another Leech Life. Um, we can definitely take a Leaf Storm. They do miss the Leaf Storm, which is unfortunate. Araquan is kind of popping off right now. We go for the Leech Life. Superior does go down, which is fantastic. So that's that's all well and good. We've, 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 we've um, stalled some of the terms of the screen as well, which is great. So now they have Slowbro, Great Tusk, and they have an Iron Valiant left. Slowbro comes in, which is going to be especially slow now that the Sticky Webs are up. They get caught in the Sticky Webs, lowering their speed even further. Now we switch out. Um, if... Hmm. If we assume they're going to attack us, we should Miracle. I'm going to Miracle. They go Belly Drum. Belly Drum. That ain't good. 
But they're not EV for level 50, though, which is great, because it means they're not going to pop that Citrus Berry. Ha! So they are leftovers, actually, so it doesn't really matter about that. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Now we just need to outspeed them and go for a Liquidation, right? Liquidation comes through. No, no quick draw for them. Bit of damage. They go for the Shell Sidearm, which is, of course, going to take us out because of the Belly Drum. Now, we need Gumshoes in, and we need them to not get quick draw. Or we go into Great Tusk. But I'm leaning more towards the Gumshoes. I'm going to go Gumshoes because I know we outspeed. And I know they're not going to get a quick draw this turn. So let's go for a double edge and find out. There we go. No quick draw. Double edge takes Slowbro out in one shot. Brilliant job from Gumshoes there. Great Tusk comes in. Looking amazing. Nice and shiny. Gets caught by the sticky webs and the stealth, uh, no stealth rocks, unfortunately. But we go for a double edge. They go for a rapid spin. Yeah, they go for a rapid spin. I didn't, I didn't mean in that order. I knew they'd still outspeed us after sticky webs because Gumshoes are very slow. We go for a double edge. Let's see how much it does through Reflect. That's a lot of damage. It's a lot of damage. The teams Reflect wore off as well. Let's go for a double edge again. They go for an EQ. It should, shouldn't take us out. Yeah, it does. Never mind. So Looker goes down. The Gumshoes plan failed. But it's fine. The light screen's going to wear off, which means the Reflect wore off. Well, the Reflect has already wore off. So we can go into our Great Tusk. We need to go for Rapid Spins first and foremost. So they go for an Ice Spinner, which is going to bounce right off us. There we go. Bounces right off us. We get some Rocky Helmet Ship. We go for a Rapid Spin so that we can outspeed this Iron Valiant that comes in. And at least have a chance of victory. So we keep going for Rapid Spins here. Rapid Spin comes through. There we go. At plus two speed. And then I want to be at plus three speed so we outspeed the Valiant after a booster energy. They go for an EQ. That's going to do no damage. We go for another rapid spin to take them out. We'll not take them out, but take them close to being out. There we go. Ice spinner comes through. Does a bit more damage than Earthquake, which makes sense. And then they're going to go down to the Rocky Helmet, which is great. So we've great Tusk out of the way. We've got Iron Valiant left. And now I know we can't KO Iron Valiant with one shot with Earthquake unless it's a crit. And I'm really hoping we don't get the crit. I'm really hoping we don't get the crit. So... Um, let's see how this plays out. Let's go for an Earthquake. Earthquake comes through. Bit of damage to the Iron Valiant, yeah? Yeah, two Akeos. And they go for... They fought that out speed. They fought that out speed. Unlucky Cody. That's that's unfortunate for you. I'm going to go for an Earthquake and I'm going to take you out right now. Earthquake comes through and it should finish off the Valiant from there. As it does, as that's going to be the game. So GG Cody, that was a fun one. GG indeed. Um, that, was, that makes a great bonus battle, I will say that. So GG. What a great game to finish off with. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Feel free to use the team with the code on the screen right now. And with that being said, I'll catch you all in a bit.